Here we go. deserves a proverbial ding sound because that is that real for it. Give it a ding because that is indeed the case. This iconic sir who's become truly one of the prime internet stars of the last decade and then some. And I have to ask you, sir, I thought you were going to recommend Lecrae or maybe at least Donnie McClurkin or maybe Andy McCoy or someone or Kurt Franklin. But Sea Murder is your song of choice. Explain the quality. It's not, don't think about the lyrics, okay? Just listen to the beat. Nothing gets you more hype when you hear that instrumental, okay? That Simon Says too, okay? It's not just Sea Murder. That's a lot of different beats for that. And listen, I used, I used that as my instrument for years on my Twitch before they were cracking down on DMCA. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Give him that whole clap, the Kawhi Leonard laugh with that in the major way. And yes, as someone part of at least the DMC most wanted list, I understand it always. So the full solidarity indeed for Silk the Shaka and Massive Peace, brother, all the way. Sir Miller, hope that you are doing as well as possible with this. And that means that love for New Orleans could have easily led you being to being a Saints fan and could have led you to be eventually a Pelicans or Hornets fan in the past. But no, this man right here has chosen America's team as well as his Orlando Magic. So how did it come to be with you being a floor person in North Florida to say, yes, I will stay loyal to the Magic as well as was it your father who influenced you to become a fan of quote unquote America's team. Alright, so I get this question all the time. Let, let's, let's just get to it. I'm from Central Florida, born and raised in Orlando. Mm. I like all Florida teams. Orlando Magic, Dynasty starts in two years. Florida Gators, I went there, graduated, go Gators. Orlando City, it makes sense. So I like the Tampa Bay Rays. <laughs> See, I sense right there, good sir. We are winning the Super Bowl this year. Stop. I don't care that our offseason was terrible. We're still in the NFC East. We're still playing against scrub competition. We still have Rain to go to Prescott. Mm. I don't care. Cue the Barkley sale for that great guarantee all the way by this great sir. Guarantee. He has said it right there once again in the confidence of the Cowboys. And we'll get to the Cowboys in terms of the fandom in a second. But wasn't your mother a Dolphins fan? And your mother couldn't sway. Is that true or not, sir? True or false? Okay, yes. My mom is a Dolphins fan. Through and through. But it's also like, is my mom watching football every Sunday? <laughs> Can my mom name every player on the count on the Dolphins right now? I don't know. Can she name three? I'm not sure. It's a little bit different, right? My dad growing up, he was in there like swimwear. Mm -hmm. My mom, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Well, good sir, this is something 
um, that is such a fascinating thing for you because I have to ask you this question because it is a possible scenario. If the Cowboys and Dolphins were to meet in a Super Bowl in the future, whether in this upcoming season or in the year 3000, where that may be more probable considering how the Dolphins are with things, how would the trash talk go down between you and your father towards your mother? Here's the thing, okay? <laughs> I'm an elite trash talker. That's facts. I will trash talk you PG-13 and body you I'm telling you, man, that is something right there with that level of sports aficionado site bravado that you got to get, as we say in the whole black church, the full level of amen. amen. I'm telling you, man, because that is something that really, really resonates with the fan, fan excitement that you show with that. And that excitement was evident for you in one of your incredible incredible displays of content just on the twitter side alone because your orlando magic got the number one overall pick and as a new york fan who saw the knicks get another one besides a one and it was like once again the lottery does it your magic my word the talent that you are stacking just go ahead and just say what it is now because most people listening to this, right, wherever you are, if you can hear my voice, there's a good chance you don't watch the Orlando Magic. There's also a good chance that you don't know anything about the Orlando Magic. So let me educate you uh -oh. about the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic are building one of the best teams in the NBA. The Orlando Magic are building, we have, one of the youngest teams in the NBA. Markel Fultz is 23 years old, all-star potential. Mm. Jaden Thugs, younger, all-star potential. RJ Hampton, Cole Anthony. We have Big Chum, Chuma Okiki. Okay. The talent is there. Let's go to power forward. Jonathan Isaac, when this man comes back, he has Kevin Durant potential. Mm. Kevin Durant potential. His name is Bol Bol. I don't know why the Denver Nuggets <laughs> us Bol Bol. Let's go back. I forgot about Devin Kennedy. Do you know who that is? You don't. He was <laughs> the G League. Please go watch. Franz <laughs> Wagner. This man should have been Rookie of the Year. Mm. He's going to have one of the best seasons next year. Next to him. Wendell Carter, Jr., all-star potential. He came from the uh, Chicago Bulls. <laughs> Once he came from the Bulls, his career exploded. Who else needs to do that soon? I'm looking at you, Zach Levine. Come on over. Uh-oh. And now we can do the same for you. So I'm not even talking about Mo Bamba, right, Who's ha who could have a breakout season next year as well. Mm -hmm. Did you add? The number one overall pick. Woo! Understanding what I'm saying, like we have some of the youngest talent, and then you add an all-star level player like a Chet Holmgren. Then you add mm. an all-star level player like a Jabari Smith. But an all-star level player like a Jaden Ivey. But Arrow. I'm telling you, what we have right now is a young Team. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Sir Magruder. You put Jaden Ivy in there. How would Jalen Suggs feel, as well as Cole Anthony, if you wanted to do that? This is the thing. If you have a Dwayne Wade on your team, would you want to draft another Dwayne Wade? What's the answer to that question? That's a real... Absolutely. What the heck? I'll take two Dwayne Wade. So it's just a matter of what does the, what does the front office think? What does the front office need? Because I'm telling you, if they think Jaden Ivey is the best player in the draft, we're going to take Jaden Ivey. Mm. We have. We are taking. But also, look into it. Our man is 
management loves the long boys. We love long talent. That's why we traded for Paul Bowles. Yes. We drafted a Jonathan Isaac. That's why we drafted a Mo Bamba. Look at who we're drafting. This leads me to believe it's a Chet Holmgren, it's a Jabari Smith over a Paolo type. Even though he's in, he is 6'10", it's just I think we value the length more. I think we might value the three-point shooting. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. This is a, it's a, an exciting time, though, to be a Magic. Well let, me, well, let me ask you. If you were in that Magic front office at the moment, and with this Orlando Magic, with this promising young talent all the way. Sorry, Troy, but this team's got really incredible young talent, and they're going to be at least exciting to watch next season. If you were John Hammond towards Sir Mosley as a head coach, and you had to decide between Chet Holmgren or Jabari Smith for the number one overall pick for your franchise, who would it be for you at the moment? See, if I were management, I would know the answer to this because I'm going to let this play out. I am going to take full advantage of all the time we have before the draft. We're going to get them in combines. We're going to get them in drills. And then I'll know. It'll be easy once we have these guys in drills, once we have these guys get a closer look at everyone. It won't be a hard decision for our management. Mm-hmm. They will know. Chet's the guy. They will know Jabari's the guy. Mm. Number two, where you could just have the team number one decide. <laughs> nah. Stop. No one wishes they were two. Everyone wishes they were one. And with number one, oh, we need to talk about this too. With number one mm. comes eyes. That's true. People are sleeping on the magic because they don't know anything about the magic. I saw one podcast, I won't name it, but they were like, they said it was so unimaginative, so uninspiring that the fact that Orlando magic strong pick because we're just gonna we're not gonna do anything good with people. Let me tell you, you don't watch the magic. You don't know anything about the magic. That's Stop real talk. Talking about the magic. When you haven't watched a single game about the magic mm. are you talking about uninspiring. You know nothing about our squad. Stop talking about us unless you watch it. Because if you watch us, you're gonna know that we're not gonna do That's real, t- that's real talk. That's real talk. That's real talk where it may have people actually like Dick DeVos, your owner, because he's a ridiculous person. But that's something where he certainly wouldn't mind the talent on the roster because you saw with the Cavs this season. No one thought the Cavs were going to do anything, thought Kevin Love was going to be the buyout favorite and all that. And when they were healthy, they were legitimately a top three team with Evan Mobley. Make a difference. It's not like it's the Warriors every year. The Warriors almost lost to the Grizzlies without John Moran. Yep. What are we talking about? It is possible for any team to win the championship. Now, Miami is in talks to go to to, uh, to, to the title championship, and their best player is Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't need a Kevin Durant now to go to the finals, but Jimmy Butler can get you there. And let me tell you, I think we have some players on the Magic that can get to a Jimmy Butler level. Oh, yeah. Easily. So, we'll see. Indeed, indeed, with the great start on overall overtime on Spotify Live and for the Believe Network, that is Scooter McGruder. There's so many things to discuss, so we have to put the magic aside. Before we get to the Cowboys to close with that, you being a proud U of M alum, 
And being there in the Tebow, whole dynasty, Brandon Spice, Percy Harvin, when Urban Meyer wasn't kicking Josh Lambeau, allegedly, you were there in those days with that. But it's something that I talked with with Fred Siegel of Old Texas Post, because he's a proud UFF alum. And it's something where one of your great videos earlier in the day focused on how your great school was focusing on the rivals that is the Nose and the Florida State Seminoles. And we'll show that in a second real quick. But Fred was talking about how there's possibly a hatred even more of Miami University. Now, he's of an older generation, obviously, from him growing up in the 90s and us literally being in the same age range with that. But is that true? Is the hatred for Miami University as close as the hatred for your northern rivals up there with you? Okay, so first off, I have to correct you. It's, it's not you, man. That is Miami. So I graduated from Florida Go Gators. <laughs> Second off, the, for people who don't know this, the Miami Hurricane fan base, I would put up there as one of the worst, if not the worst, period. Okay? If you think Cowboys fans are bad, you have not seen a Miami Hurricanes fan. You want to talk about people living in the past, okay? These are, that, that's the, that is the blueprint. These people have not been competitive in the past 10 years, and they're talking as if they're championship contenders every year. But understand why people hate Cowboys fans because I just look at Miami fans. I understand why. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they take it to another level. And it's just egregious. Y'all haven't done it. Mm. You're not going to do anything for a while. You need to get some recruits in. You have a great head coach. I'm sad that y'all got him. But please relax. Y'all have not done anything. Stop. Stop. Oh! Super Hot Fire had to respond to that ether in that major way. And we're going to do that for sure once the season comes up for more Miami slander. But it was something where I just had to see if that whole level of annoyance for University of Miami was the same. We don't even hate FSU. FSU is our sister school. <laughs> yes, we do hate them, but it's like, at the end of the day, these people are our friends, right? You just didn't get into Florida. We get it. You're going to FSU. Okay, we're friends. I don't know you. You didn't even go to Miami. Stop! <laughs> more than well and more than great with this this whole journey from you becoming quote unquote in that favorite shout out to the great josiah johnson and the many others that have blazed the path started with this incredible incredible video that you had from back in the day and back in the day it was this great one called dorm life you had this video here and you know how to bring up <laughs> Did you ever imagine, because you were on a great whole show of whole wild and crazy kids like show that you were on back in the day, which wasn't wild and crazy kids, but that type of show that led you into wanting to be television and or at least some video production with it. And then that moment with that dorm life, your first video on your YouTube channel that's so successful. Did you think this whole path, could you envision that this whole path from God would be this whole way that you now have? Honestly, absolutely not. I had no idea what I was doing with my life when I graduated <laughs> from college. Uh, I took a job with AmeriCorps, and during that 10 months is when I started making YouTube videos. They were terrible initially, and then they got better over time. But no, I could never imagine that it would take me to where I am now. And where I am now is... I got a free car and gas for seven months. I've gone to four national championship games for free. Mm -hmm. I've been to a final four. Uh, it's just like I've done a lot of dope experiences. God has allowed me to go to a lot of dope places and meet a lot of dope people. So I no, I could never have imagined that this is where I would go, and I cannot imagine where I will be going in the future. Well, 
what you're going in the future is we have two more questions before we finish this one out is you instead of a green screen because everyone has a green screen with it no 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 for this original individual that is david school to my with this you have a blue screen in the background sir can you explain the blue screen background that you have do I want to really spend the majority of my time editing in a room that's painted green? <laughs> or do, I mean, I like the cowboys. I like the magic. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that kind of backfired because now I can't wear anything gosh darn blue when I'm doing videos. So, <laughs> kind, of, kind of messed that up. But, uh, <laughs> and yet, it looks tremendous with that all the way and this is why for a great final question you cue this up because we can go in this many other times and for more interviews in the future with that but i would be not remiss to give you full level of being the ultimate cowboys president of cowboys twitter that you are unofficially officially whichever it may be jerry jones hit this man up for sure but your pronouncements for this season is it going to be, despite no more Mari Cooper being on with this, an offensive line changing throughout the time and all this, do you feel it is going to be a season that will lead to a whole 19 and 0 or 20 and 0? Who knows? What do you think for you will be the Cowboy season? This year? 15 and 2. Stop lying. 15 and 2. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. And we're winning it again the following season. Back to back. We're going back to back. Randy Dakota Prescott will lead us in the promised land. Ezekiel Elliott will have a breakout season. Jalen Tolbert. Okay. Jalen Tolbert mm. up for rookie of the year candidacy. Just wait. Just wait. We'll see. I, I think right there, do you are mentioning the Jalen Tolbert shows a level of real in-depth coverage with that. And honestly, he may win somebody some fantasy with that to the point where you have to get the full Barkley guarantee for that in the major way because it was that major. Guaranteed. And it was that special for what it is. To close this, sir, because C Murder, having the full level of him as your soundtrack, who is your other top five favorite music artist that you can think of at the moment? See, that's the thing. I don't really listen to music these days. I'm more of an old school music listener. Break it down, sir. My favorite group of all time, The Temptations. Mmm. Iconic. Stop by. Go listen to some, some Motown. Stop by. Yes. It's good for the soul. It's good for the soul. Also, see Murder, though. Stop by. It will get you high. <laughs> That is indeed the case. Well, give this man a great round of applause. The incomparable, the original, and just the wonderful Cameron David Scooter McGruter. Give him a round of applause for. And that means we give him the outro, the after.